Here we're going to be looking at a partner withdrawal or the retirement of a partner from a partnership here. And the withdrawal or the retirement of a partner may involve two different cases here. So case one, that's a transaction with the existing partners or a new partner. Now the existing partner or the new partner directly buys out the partner that's withdrawing or retiring. And then case two, the transaction with a partnership entity. Now the partnership entity is buying out the partner that's retiring or withdrawing here. So we'll start here with case one, where the equity of the withdrawing partner is purchased with the personal assets here, that's the key here, of the existing or a new partner rather than with the assets of the partnership itself. So these uh, existing partners or these new partners deal directly with the partner here that's being bought out here. So let's go look at our example here. We have a partner A, a partner B, and a partner C, and each has a capital balance here. And for our example here, partner C is going to buy partner A. Uh, is interest here in the partnership. They're going to buy uh, Partner C is going to buy partners A $60,000 capital balance or interest in the partnership here. So that's case one here. So uh, when partner C buys out, partner A, partner C's capital account here is going to increase from 40000 here by the $60,000 that they buy out uh, partner A. And so his total capital account will be $100,000 after that. So let's look here. Partner A withdraws from the partnership and partner C uses his personal funds here to purchase partner A's interest here of $60,000, their capital interest of $60,000. At its current value, partner C is going to actually pay $72,000 for that $60,000 capital interest. So we're assigning that as its current value here. Now if this price paid here by partner C, the $72,000, is not used to impute the value of the entity, that's the $60,000 capital interest here that's being exchanged between partner A and partner C, then we would use this accounting over here. So let's look at it. So partner A withdraws. So partner A's capital account here would be reduced by $60,000 and it would be transferred here to partner C. Their capital account here would be increased by $60,000 here. So partner C uses his personal funds here of $72,000 to purchase partner A's $60,000 capital account. So what I've shown here is what would be included here in the partnership's accounting records. Okay, now let's look at case two here where the withdrawing partner is selling their interest directly to the partnership here. So for case two, when the withdrawing partner sells an interest to the partnership rather than to the individual partners, you can either use the bonus method here or the goodwill method for recording this transaction. Again, this is where the partnership entity is dealing directly with the partner here. So the partnership entity buys partners A's interest in the partnership here. So the partnership entity is buying partners A's $60,000 capital balance here. So the partnership entity is going to pay $72,000 to purchase partner A's $60,000 capital ba uh, balance here in their capital account. So the remaining partners have a bonus that they have to pay here to partner A and that's calculated as goes here. The fair value of A, that was the $72,000 here that they're paying to partner A here minus the recorded capital here of A which is the $60,000 capital balance they have. So the difference between the two gives us a $12,000 bonus that uh, the existing partners are going to have to pay here to partner A here. So let's look at how we'd record this transaction. Again, this is using, using the bonus method here to buy this $60,000 interest here in partner A. So uh, partner A's capital account here would be debited or eliminated essentially here by $60,000 here. And then uh, partner B, their capital account would be reduced by $8,000 of the bonus here. And partner C, their capital account would be reduced here by $4,000 for the bonus here. And then the cash account would be credited or reduced here by $72,000. So how do we get the $8,000 and the $4,000 here allotted to partners B and C that are remaining in the partnership here? So that's based on this 40 40%, 20% profit loss ratio that came off the original partnership agreement here, or it's a two to one ratio in this case. So the profit loss ratio between uh, partner B and C would be uh, using the, uh, we'd calculate the 
bonus this way. So for uh, partner B here, they would have 66% of 66% here of the bonus um, that would be paid to uh, the exiting partner uh, A in this case here. Time well, and this would be. 66% times $12,000 or $8,000 here. And then for partner C, they would get 33% here times uh, $12,000 here for $4,000. That would be uh, have to be a bonus paid to partner A here. So again, just looking at this up here, this is where the partnership entity pays the $72,000 to purchase partner A's $60,000 capital balance here. Now let's look at how we'd use the goodwill method here, uh, where this partnership entity buys partner A's interest in the partnership here. So the partnership entity is going to buy the $60,000 capital amount here of partner A here. So we have two alternatives that are available to us when using this goodwill method here. The first alternative would be to recognize only the goodwill traceable to the retiring partner. And the second method would be to recognize the amount of goodwill traceable to the entity or the partnership itself here. So first let's look at our first alternative here where the goodwill is traceable to the retiring partner. So that would be here the $72,000 paid to the uh, partner and less their capital account here of $60,000. So the difference here would be $12,000 worth of goodwill here that would be paid to partner A here. So let's go up and look at how we'd record that. So partner A withdraws here using alternative one here where the goodwill is traceable to partner A. So we would increase our goodwill account here for the partnership by $12,000 and then A's capital account here would also be increased by $12,000 or credited here for $12,000. And then we turn around here and we reduce or we eliminate capital A's capital account here for the total amount here of $72,000 that was paid to them. And then we would credit or reduce our cash here for $72,000. Now let's look at our second alternative here where the goodwill is traceable to the partnership entity or the total partnership here. So let's go through this logic here. So assuming the existing part assets are properly valued and that the payment to partner A of $72,000 consists of number one here A's capital balance plus A's share of the unrecorded goodwill here. So uh, their unrecorded goodwill here would have been the $72,000 paid to them less their capital balance here. So their goodwill going to a partner A here is $12,000. Now uh, therefore if a partner A's goodwill here portion is of $12,000. You divide that here by their uh, capital uh, profit loss ratio here of 40%. So let's just go up here and look at that. So partner A's profit and loss percentage here was 40% here. Partner B was 40% here and partner C was 20%. But we're looking at partner A's 40% here. So we use that 40% down here, divide that into $12,000 and that gives us $30,000 worth of goodwill. That would be the total goodwill involved here. So A's share of goodwill, that was the $12,000 divided there by their profit loss ratio here of 40% gives the total goodwill or, or imputed value of the total goodwill will here of $30,000. So let's look at how we'd record that here, alternative two here. So partner A withdraws here and the goodwill is traceable to the entire entity or to the entire partnership entity here. So we go down here and we'd debit or increase goodwill here by $30,000 and then we would increase partner A's capital account here for $12,000 and then we'd also increase partner B's capital account here for $12,000 and then C's capital account would be increased by $6,000 here. And then we turn around here and we would eliminate uh, partner A's capital account here of $72,000. That was the amount paid to him here. And then we go down here and we uh, credit cash or we reduce cash for $72,000, the amount paid to um, partner A here for their withdrawal. So let's look at how we calculated these capital increases here for the partnership and how we divided up this goodwill here. So uh, that was based on the profit loss ratio that we looked up up above here. The profit loss ratio again we looked at was A would get 40%, B 40%, C 20%. So A's 40% times the $30,000 of total imputed goodwill gives $12,000 worth to A and then a partner B again got 40% of the $30,000 amount here. That gives them $12,000 here and then 
C got 20% here of the $30,000 for $6,000. So that's how we would uh, calculate our, using the goodwill method here for uh, either the goodwill traceable to partner A or the goodwill here traceable to the entire partnership entity.